I'm Steve from This Hook With Cars, and last time you saw this Mark II Austin Healey Sprite, I had replaced the master cylinder and the brake hoses. After bleeding the brakes, they work, but not very well. So today I'm going to replace all of the wheel cylinders. This car has drum brakes in the front, and you see six boxes over here. That is because there's two wheel cylinders on each side in the front, as well as the two wheel cylinders in the back. If you had a Mark III Austin Healey Sprite, or a Mark II MG Midget, you would have disc brakes in the front, which would mean you'd have a caliper on each side, and the only wheel cylinders you would need to replace are the two in the back. Today I have the car on my two post lift, that way I can remove all of the wheels at once. It will make the brake job a lot quicker. Taking the brake drums off should be an easy task. Just take a large Phillips screwdriver and undo the two Phillips screws that hold the drum on. Just take these out completely. Now one piece of advice that I can give you when you're trying to resurrect a car that's been sitting for a long time, don't go pressing the brake pedal real hard. If you feel that the brakes aren't working real well, you don't want the cylinder to get stuck pressing the shoes against the drum, which will make it really hard to get the drum off. So if you have a feeling that your brakes aren't working, go ahead and just uh, take them apart instead of keep trying to press on them because you're only gonna make it worse for trying to get the drum off later. Let's see how easy this one is. I'm just wiggling it back and forth. It is coming off. This hole allows you to get to the brake adjuster and you can release that if you need to. We might have to on one of these other drums, so I'll show you that. But first I wanna show you how to Wiggle the drum off if you can. Okay, I'm gonna turn this so you can see it a little better. Right here, this is the little adjuster that we could turn through that hole if we needed to. It moves a cammed piece that sits on top of this cylinder. And there's also one over here. We could turn those and that would bring the shoes in further and take some of the pressure off of the drum. Hopefully, if you have your cylinder stuck out, you can adjust these and get enough slack between the shoe and the drum to remove it. But a lot of times, the brake surface here actually becomes rusted to the drum so badly that adjusting this is not gonna do anything because it's actually the shoe that's stuck to the drum. And that's why it's really beneficial to try to get the car running and moving around before you try to take the drum off. That way you can break the rusty adhesion between the shoes and the inner surface of the brake drum. You can fool around with the springs a lot to get the shoes off and when installing them, but I like to just pull them off of one side. Now you can see that the springs are loosened and you can take everything out. Now put the car up in the air and we'll take these wheel cylinders out by undoing them from the back side of the backing plate. This car has two wheel cylinders in the front that need removed. So there's two bolts that hold this wheel cylinder right here in. This pipe runs over to the other wheel cylinder which will have this pipe connected and the hose that the brake fluid comes down from the master cylinder which will also have to be removed. So here's what the front on this side looks like. And here's the back on this side. This is the pipe that runs over to the other side. And here's the new brake hose that we had just installed. And the two bolts that hold the wheel cylinder on this side on. The first step would be to disconnect the pipe that runs between the two, and then take the one with the bleeder out first. Here's the little pipe that runs between the two wheel cylinders. I've got that out. Just take the two bolts off of there and it'll fall out. On this cylinder, we have the brake hose coming down to it. Now this is not the side that can spin without twisting the entire hose up. So what I've done is I've loosened it a little and then I'll wiggle the cylinder out and then I'll just unscrew it from out here. And then when I install the new one, I'll screw it onto the hose out here with this hose sticking through the hole. And then I'll mount it back up and then tighten it the little bit last bit of the way that it needs tightened from there. And then I don't have to take the entire hose off to replace this. And here's what I meant. I have my hose sticking through that hole now. And now I can just unscrew the wheel cylinder from the hose. 
Now that I have these original wheel cylinders off, I need to put the new ones on, and they are directional, so the ones on the front left have to go on the front left, and then there's a different set that goes on the front right. But on each side, on the left, the two wheel cylinders are the same, and then on the right, the two wheel cylinders are the same. Okay, I've got the new cylinders installed. You can see them there. When you turn this adjuster, it brings the pivot point up further, which ends up pushing out more on the shoes and pushing them closer to the drum. This takes the slack between the pads on the shoe and the inner surface of the drum out. It's important with drum brakes because they retract because of the springs that the slack is adjusted correctly. Otherwise, you have to push your pedal down too far before they engage or they rub and create a lot of heat. And of course, you can adjust the adjuster so that it takes all the slack off to make it easier to get the drum off. I'm going to set the adjusters to their lowest point while installing the shoes, and it should go together without any tools. Now with everything setting on there, I'm gonna put the drum on. turn it a couple times and that will get the shoes centered in there. Now I'll put the Phillips screws back in and then I'll turn the hole so that I can see the adjuster and I'm going to give it a couple clicks for now. Now this side is ready to be bled and then I'll readjust it once the wheels put back on. Obviously on the rear of the car we need to take the wheel and the drum off. I've turned the drum until the adjuster was visible. I'm going to back that off so that it'd be the easiest to take the drum off. And the next parts are done underneath the car, so I'll get it up in the air. On the Mark I and Mark II sprites, they have a lever on the back of the wheel cylinder, and that's for the parking brake. So I'm gonna take this pin out that connects the parking brake to the lever, and I'm going to take out this banjo bolt right here, which connects the brake pipe and the bleeder to the wheel cylinder. Once I have those two removed, I can also take this boot off the back of the wheel cylinder, and then all of this stuff will be disconnected and out of the way for removing the wheel cylinder. Okay, I have the handbrake disconnected, and I also have the banjo bolt that connects to the wheel cylinder disconnected as well. This does take a 5 8 Whitworth wrench to undo, so make sure that you have your Whitworth wrenches handy if you're tackling the rear wheel cylinder job on your Mark I or Mark II Sprite. Next is to pull out the adjuster so that I can make room for removing the wheel cylinder. This job can be done without taking the backing plate or the shoes off, but it is a little bit of a trick to get everything lined up so that the wheel cylinder can come out. So there's a slot in the shoe right here and I like to just stick my screwdriver into that and use that to pull the shoe up and out and away. Make sure that it doesn't get caught on the back of the backing plate. Just pull out a little bit if it does, and then you should be able to slide the adjuster out, giving you quite a bit more room down here. Use that same slot on the other shoe to get that shoe off of the cylinder so that the cylinder can come out and away. Now the trick to removing the cylinder is to pull it up into the slot that retains it and then pulling it back down the other way. I wish I could tell you there's one simple trick to getting this out, uh, doing it this way, which is probably the quickest way to do it. And also make sure that your handbrake lever is free. This can be difficult if the cylinder is seized. And as I've done here, you can use the, the edge of the shoe to kind of hold it up on the backing plate so that you can hold the lower one out of the way to get this maneuvered out of there. When I do the brake job on the next barn sprite, I'll do it a different way show you how to do it that way, but this is definitely the quickest way to replace the wheel cylinders on the Mark I and Mark II Sprite. Here's my new wheel cylinder. You can see as the lever is pulled, 
that pushes up on the cylinder a little bit and that is what sets your parking brake. You can also see the slots right here. This is what holds this cylinder to the backing plate. This slot up here is bigger than the one at the bottom. So what is actually going on when you remove the cylinder is you're sliding this up into the backing plate so that the bottom can be kicked out and then you pull it down to remove the top slot from the backing plate and then the whole thing can be removed. Now I'll just slide my adjuster back in. I'm gonna make sure that it's turned to the lowest position. Now I just need to hook everything back up. I've gotten it all back together. Don't forget to put your boot on before you put the parking brake and the banjo bolt back on. Now I just need to do the other two sides and then I'm ready to bleed the brakes, see how they work. Let's see if all the brake fluid drained out while I was doing that. So I'm gonna get that topped off and then bleed the brakes again. I had the brakes bled and I had the wheels back on the car. And I've used the brakes now, tested them, make sure they work. So that should have centered the shoes. Now I need to adjust them. You wanna click your adjuster on until the brakes grab. Okay, they grabbed right there. Now I wanna back it off one more click. There's one click, and that's gonna be my setting for where I'm gonna leave the drum brakes. After you drive the car a little bit, it may either bed in the new shoes that you put in or clean up the drums and the original shoes, so you may need to come back and adjust it. And you may have gotten it adjusted too tightly, which will create excess heat, and you wanna come back and release it. So make sure you test drive the car before you finalize your brake setting. And then there is a little dust plug that you can put in through the wheel. And that just plugs that hole up so that you don't get anything into your brake drums. That's it for today with the Mark II Austin Healy Sprite. If you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.